To help me install state-of-the-art electronics in my old bass boat, I asked for help from a good friend of mine. His name is Bob Troxel. He's currently a charter captain on Lake Erie for smallmouth and walleye. He's a former fire chief of Athens City. He was once an electrician, and he also has RCT Marine Electronics, which is the installation of marine electronics in boats, so he really knows this stuff well. We're getting ready to install this hummingbird unit. And one of the things that's, that's best to do initially is uh, lay everything out and make sure everything will fit the way you'd like it to fit and to make sure that uh, uh, the unit is usable. I mean, it's simply easy to see, easy to uh, reach your controls on the unit and just basically you want to make it user friendly. So the first thing we're going to do is look at, at our GPS module and find a location that uh, where it will mount on a flat surface uh, within view of uh, certainly nothing obstructing it uh, from the satellites. So what we've chosen to do is locate it uh, on this flat area on the console and we want to make sure when we do this that uh, we can mount it and if you'll notice right now that we have a good location for it however to drill the holes we're going to run into an issue with the windshield so to do this properly we're going to have to remove the windshield and to mount this uh, uh, so it's uh, unobscured and we have a good location for it and it's out of the way. Uh, so that's the first thing that we have done. Uh, we also uh, need to position the unit and to make sure that the unit is going to be uh, where it's easily visible. And what we've done with this is we have our GPS module uh, position to where uh, we want it and now we can go ahead and look uh, to position the the unit itself and what I like to do is if all possible center things up and to make it uh, look aesthetically pleasing on your boat and the way to do that is simply uh, we're going to use a just a carpenter's square and to get a measurement from side to side and we know that it's about three inches from there and it's about three inches from there. So we know it's centered pretty well. Uh, we also want to make sure that uh, the unit uh, is visible from the driver's position. And what we've done is simply uh, positioned it with the bracket on the unit. And now we know that uh, the unit is centered and is visible and the controls can be easily reached from uh, the driver. So that's what we're going to do initially. When we get the units mounted, then we'll start running the control cables uh, to that unit. The first step was drilling holes for the GPS antenna. We applied silicone to the holes and to the screws before we mounted the antenna. The final step was to secure the antenna with screws. We also drilled holes for the bracket that would hold the unit in place. Again, we used silicone on the screws to prevent leakage in the holes. We've got the main Hummingbird unit installed. We've got the GPS module installed. We have our cables ran uh, underneath, uh, both from the transom up and now down to the power, uh, hooking into the main power supply underneath the console. Now our next step will be installing the side finder transducer. All right, we've got our template taped up in the right spot for the transducer mounting bracket. And we're just going to start the holes. Not drill them all the way and just start them right where the template says to. Okay, now that we know the holes are in the right place, we're going to drill them to a depth of about one inch. Okay, before we fasten, 
the mounting bracket. We're going to fill those holes with some uh, silicone, marine silicone. Okay, we got our screws started, and uh, all the screws and hardware you need for this installation comes with the uh, with the unit, so you don't have to buy anything extra. And now we just have to put it in place. Okay, we've got our bracket installed for the uh, transducer, the side and down imaging transducer. Now let's hook it up. You just take this pin and run it through this hole, line it up, and out the other side. When we get that done, we're going to attach a, uh, a plastic washer, a regular washer, and this screw right here. So we'll just put this in the other side. In fact, we can put this right down now. Give you an idea what it's going to look like if you kick up them out. And when we tighten that down, we're going to have it in place. The final step is to, uh, is to get this wire secured so it's not hanging out here. Uh, I could drill a hole and run it through the transom, but I, I think everybody who ever owned this boat drilled holes in it as a rite of passage, and I'm just... <laughs> I don't want to drill any more holes in it, so I'm just going to run it up through that sleeve uh, where the cables and, uh, and the steering mechanism goes out for my outboard, and uh, I'm just going to fix it here. Now these fasteners, uh, they come with the unit, so you don't have to buy anything as with the screws. So I'm going to drill holes, uh, put some silicone in there, and secure uh, this cable. In order to get bottom readings when you're running on plane, you need to have a transducer that shoots through the hull. I got this one from Humminbird that has everything I need, including the two-part epoxy to glue it to the bottom of the hull. I was able to find a place on the running pad near the transom where I could install the transducer to shoot through the hull. As you can see, it has got years of grease and grime that has to be cleaned. I used Starbright's Extreme Clean cleaner and a stiff brush to do so. After cleaning the hull, where I was going to mount the transducer, I sanded it with a very coarse sandpaper. Okay, we've got our epoxy mixed. Now what we need to do is, is spread epoxy on the bottom of the puck. Get it nice and even on there. And we're also going to put epoxy in the bottom of the running pad where we're going to place it. And we're going to twist it, twist it into place. Since it's a puck, a round puck, it really doesn't matter which direction it's facing it. So we're just going to put it down and just twist it. Twist it into that epoxy, just like that. And now I'm going to get a very high-tech piece of equipment. It's called a brick. And I'm going to set that brick on there, if it can fit. Let the whole, the whole thing dry. Thanks to my preparation, this installation is held up through pounding boat rides on Lake Champlain and on Lake Erie. Before I installed the Humminbird unit on the bow of my old bass boat, I had Bob move it around so I could find the best position. A flush mount worked best for me. Once we mounted the unit's bracket, we had to install several cables. The first cable that we installed and we tried to position the GPS module to where it was out of the way and wasn't a trip hazard while you're on the bow. So we positioned the Hummingbird module down in the corner right here. And when we did that, we had to drill a hole so the cable would go down underneath the deck. We've also installed the power 
uh, and we've attached the power to our little front panel on the accessory and it's simply 12 volts, a negative and a positive, making sure that you have uh, the positive in the correct uh, position because if you do not, you can damage your unit if you hook them up backwards. So we have our cables uh, installed, which should have be a total of four, your the ethernet, your transducer, your GPS, and your power cable. Here's the bow unit fully installed. As you can see, all the wires and cables are under the deck. It's very uncuttered and a nice clean look. I wanted to make sure that my wiring under the console wouldn't let me down while I was fishing. The first thing I did was remove the circuit breakers. I suggest that you do this one at a time so that you don't get any wires crossed. The circuit breakers were badly corroded. I could have cleaned them and put them back, but I found replacement breakers of the same model and the same brand, so I bought new ones. I decided to keep the switches, but I wanted to clean the terminals. Here again, I removed them one at a time to avoid switching wires and confusion. I used a contact cleaner specifically made for this purpose. I sprayed the cleaner on the terminals after removing them and then pushed the terminals on and off their connectors to clean them and to make sure I was getting a good connection. After we hooked the Humminbird up to my power switch, the main power switch, um, we ran into a problem. It wasn't getting a full 12 volts. In fact, sometimes it would be less than 11 volts going to that depth finder. And these, these depth finders today, these graphs, they need 12 volts or they're not going to run right. Uh, this wouldn't even start sometimes, so did a lot of finagling around trying to find what the problem was. And I finally uh, fixed it by just connecting a wire directly from my battery to the depth finder here and the one up front too. And as you can see now, I've got over 12 volts just sitting here without the motor running, which is where it should be. And when I'm idling, I'll be up over 13 volts. Uh, so now I have no problems at all with the power. And after going through that, I would suggest with an old boat especially, I would just connect these, uh, these high power depth finders, GPS graphs, directly to your battery and foregrow all the wiring, uh, which could rob the power. And you know, even in a newer boat, that would probably be a good idea because at some time you may get some corrosion in the wiring or something that'll cut down uh, the power and you need over 12 volts if these are gonna run right. So I think a direct connection is the way to go.